The story begins as Mokizuki Tuya, a 15-year-old boy, is sitting with God after he is killed by lightning. His death was an accident as God didn't think there was anyone present at the location where lightning struck, so to make up for it, he decides to resurrect Tuya into another world. God asks Tuya if there is anything he would like for him to do, but instead of asking for powers, Tuya requests God to let him use his smartphone in the other world. His request is accepted, and he is resurrected into a new world where he has no idea where to go or what to do. He gets a call on his smartphone from God telling him that the map on his smartphone has been updated to the map of this world, so if he uses it, he can easily get to the nearest city. He starts walking, navigating through the smartphone when a carriage stops near him, and a man comes out asking Tuya to sell him his clothes. The clothes Tuya is wearing are very strange to the people of this world, that's why the man wanted to purchase them and was willing to pay a handsome price. He brings Tuya to the city into his clothes shop where he gives him gold coins in exchange for his clothes. Tuya, before leaving, asks the man if there is an inn nearby where he could stay for the time being, and the man directs him to the Silver Moon Inn. On his way to the inn, he sees two men troubling a couple of girls and decides to help them. Just as the two men launch an attack on him, he recalls how God had given a boost to his abilities, due to which he easily defeats the attackers. The girls are twins named Elza Siloeska and Linz Siloeska. They ask Tuya why he came to town, and when he tells them that right now he is just looking for the Silver Moon Inn, they tell him that they are also staying there. Tuya checks into the inn and sits with the twins who are thinking of going to a guild as it is a proper place, so the requests they accept from there will be credible, unlike their previous request, due to which they got into trouble with the two men. Tuya asks if he can join them as he also wants to work, and they agree, saying that it will be a way to thank him for saving them earlier. When they reach the guild, Tuya is confused as he can't read the language of this world, so Linz tells him about a mission to kill five one-horned wolves for 18 copper coins. They accept the mission and easily complete it, and even kill an extra wolf whose horn Tuya decides to keep with himself as a memento of his first mission, and they bring the rest of the horns to the guild and collect the reward. Afterward, as they are sitting in the inn, Tuya requests them to teach him to read, to which Els replies that Linz should be the one to do so as she is smart. He also requests she teach him magic, but she asks him for his aptitudes because magic is heavily affected by the aptitudes one is born with, and if a person doesn't have an aptitude, it can't use magic. She takes out different types of spell stones, which store, amplify, and release magic energy and can help determine the type of aptitude a person has. Tuya uses the spell stones, and it turns out that he can use all six elements, which leaves the girls surprised as they have never seen a person capable of doing so. Linz can use three types of magic, while Els can use fortification magic. There is one more type of magic stone for no magic, but it doesn't have any specific chance to use. Rather, at some point, you just realize the chant yourself. Tuya uses the gate chant for the null magic stone, which allows him to travel long distances instantly, and as he uses it, a portal opens to the forest in which they fought the wolves because he was thinking about it while using the stone. Back at the inn, the receptionist Micah comes up to the three of them with a girl named Air who works at a cafe and asks them for suggestions for putting new items on their menu. Tuya suggests ice cream, but they don't know what that is, so Tuya tells them the recipe using his smartphone. The group is now going to the royal capital as they have accepted another request from the guild to deliver a letter. They stop in a city and are about to look for an inn to stay at when they see that a girl is fighting against some men. She uses jujitsu to fight, but due to her being hungry, she doesn't have much strength, and when she is about to be attacked from behind, Tuya, Els, and Linz decide to help her. They defeat the men, but when more guards arrive, they decide to flee. The girl thanks them for their help and introduces herself as Kokonoye and tells them that she is from Ishin. Tuya asks her why she stopped moving while fighting earlier, and she tells them that she lost all her funds while traveling and is very hungry. Tuya and the others decide to treat Ye to food when she reveals that she is going to the royal capital to test her skills and wants to be as strong as her brother and father. The group decides to let her come with them as their destination is the same. As they continue on their journey, Linz gives a book to Tuya containing many null magic chants because Tuya is able to use any null magic as long as he knows the chants and knows what that chant does. Reading the book, Tuya realizes that even though there are many chants, most of them are useless, but he sees the Aport's chant that can bring distant objects into his hand and decides to use it, but nothing happens. He tried to bring Ye's sword into his hand, but as the object was too big, nothing happened. So this time, he used the chant again and manages to bring Ye's hair ribbon into his hand. Now he uses the chant Long Sense, which expands his senses, but he smells blood after using it. As they go towards the smell, they see a group of people attacked by some monsters that are being summoned by a man using summoning magic. They defeat the monster, and then Tuya defeats the summoner using the chant slip, which causes the area to lose friction. After the fight, they see that one man is on the verge of death, so Tuya asks Linz to use healing magic, but
but she tells him that part of the arrow is still in his body, so she can't heal him. Tubia uses the Aport's chant and brings the arrow out of his body and then heals the person saving his life. The man then introduces himself as Leem, a butler to Duke Ortland, and he is accompanying Sushi Ernia Ortland, the daughter of the Duke. Everyone other than Tuya takes their knee, which surprises Tuya when Ellis and Linz tell him that Duke is a title given only to the members of the royal family. Tuya and the others are now requested to provide protection to Sushi as the guards protecting them were injured, and many of them died. They accept the request and escort her to the capital of the kingdom, Belfast, where they deliver Sushi to the Duke and are thanked by him. While talking with the Duke, Tuya finds out that Sushi's mother, Ellen, is blind because of an illness that could have been healed if Ellen's father was alive because he wielded magic that could remove the disease from the body. Tuya, being able to use any magic, goes to Ellen and uses the chant recovery to cure her of her illness and make her see again. As a reward for saving his daughter and wife, the Duke gives them 40 platinum coins, each worth 10 gold coins, which would amount to 40 million yen. He also gives them the family medals, which will let them go through any checkpoint and give them access to facilities only nobles can use. Now they leave the castle of the Duke and deliver the letter to the capital, after which Yi tells the group that she wishes to remain with them, and they accept her. The group decides to stay in the royal capital for shopping before returning home when they see a girl standing nervously. Tuya offers to help her, but at first, she gets startled and then tells him that she is lost and can't find the place where she is supposed to meet her sister. Tuya helps her by navigating through the smartphone and getting her to her sister, and afterward, the group decides to split up and shop on their own and meet up two hours later. In the Silver Moon Inn, two men are playing shoji on a board that Tuya made using his magic, but Micah isn't pleased with it. Meanwhile, Ye and Els get a dessert from Air's shop, and they bring an extra so Tuya can deliver it to the Duke. Eating the dessert, the Duke and her family are very jealous that Tuya can eat such a delicious thing every day, so Tuya offers to give them the recipe so they can make it themselves. He also brings his shoji board to Duke, who is very intrigued by it. Sushi is getting very irritated that the Duke isn't letting her play, but the Duke is very immersed in the game and just tells her to go and play outside. He keeps playing with Tuya until late at night. Finally, Tuya manages to get away while the Duke still asks him to play one more. Now at the Royal Capitals Guild, the group is trying to select their next mission when Tuya suggests they do the slime mission, but all the girls refuse it because they hate slime, and the slime makes their clothes melt away, so they select another mission in the old capital and complete it. Elle suggests that it would be great if they were able to find some treasure here, but Ye says that they are in the old capital, so all the treasure must have shifted when they made a new royal capital. Tuya uses his magic to find a historic relic still present near them, but it is present under rubble, so Linz uses explosion magic to clear the path. They find a door, and after entering it, they find a mysterious language written on the walls that none of them can read. They also find earth stone, and when Tuya passes mana through it, another path opens that leads to a mysterious creature that starts absorbing mana from the light magic that Linz was using as a torch. They manage to escape to the surface, but the creature follows and attacks them. Linz attacks it with magic, but to no effect, as the creature absorbs all of it. So Els and Vie resort to physical attacks, but the creature's shell is very hard, so their attacks also don't work. Tuya tells everyone to use their magic indirectly to attack it, and they are successful in doing so, but the creature regenerates any damage it took and starts attacking again. Tuya gets an idea as he uses the Aport's chant to take the creature's red core out, which Els quickly destroys and defeats the creature. They go to the Duke to report this incident, and Tuya tells him that he took pictures of the strange writing and will provide them to him. The Duke thanks them and asks for their help to resolve this matter, as it may reveal the secret as to why the royal city was moved. Tuya prints the pictures using magic and goes to provide them to the Duke, who is already leaving because his brother, the king, has been poisoned. On the rate of his brother, the Duke tells Tuya that he believes his brother was poisoned by the nobles who oppose the trades he is doing with the kingdom of Miss Mead, whose king is a beast man. He might have been poisoned by someone who wants to take control of the throne by doing a political marriage with Princess Yumina, the king's daughter. As they reach the king, they are first met by Count Balsa, who tells the duke that they have captured the culprit who poisoned the king and reveals that the culprit is an ambassador of the kingdom of Ms. Mead. Balsa proposes to behead the culprit, but the duke tells him that the king will decide what to do, so Balsa leaves, calling the duke a lowly beastman, but Tuya uses slip chant to make him fall down. After reaching the king, Tuya uses recovery magic to instantly heal the king from the poison. He is thanked by everyone present, and the king calls for the ambassador from the kingdom of Ms. Mead, to get to the bottom of the truth. Seeing the ambassador, Tuya realizes that she is the older sister of the girl he had helped before when she was lost. Tuya now asks the general if the rune where the king was poisoned has remained untouched, and when the general confirms that, he uses the chance search to see where the poison is. The wine brought by the ambassador was considered to be poisoned, so after calling everyone, Tuya makes the general drink the wine, revealing there was nothing wrong with it. 
Now he takes a glass and asks Count Balsa to drink the wine, but he gets nervous in doing so when he is forced to drink it. He grabs his throat, saying that he has been poisoned. Tuya tells him that he has already removed the poison from the glass, and it is revealed that Count Balsa was the one that poisoned the king. Seeing the character of Tuya, Princess Yumina tells her parents that she wants to marry Tuya, but he says that in the country he comes from, you can't get married until you are 18 for a boy, and a girl has to be 16 before getting married. The king asks Tuya about his age and tells him that as he has two years left before turning 18, he can get to know Yumina more until that time. And after two years, if he still doesn't want to marry Yumina, then they will forget the matter. He tells them that they are moving too quickly if they know nothing about him, but the king tells him that Yumina possesses the mystic eyes of intuition, which allows her to see the true character of a person, so if she likes Tuya, they have nothing to worry about. Yumina now moves to live with Tuya on the order of her father, and the group is surprised to hear that he is going to get married. Yumina also joins the guild, and for her first mission, she selects to kill the king apes to show her skills. She summons wolves using summoning magic to find the apes, which they are able to defeat easily, and everyone is impressed by Yumina's skills. Yumina now teaches Tuya summoning magic, and Tuya summons the white monarch, a white tiger who is considered to be the highest class of beast that one can summon. He now has to form a pact with the tiger for the summoning to be successful, so he passes mana through the tiger, who considers him strong enough to be called his master. Tuya names the tiger Kohaku to complete the pact, and Kohaku asks permission to be at his side all the time, but Tuya says that it will be weird to have a tiger around him all the time. Kohaku turns into a cat, so it feels normal to be around when all the girls grab him because of how cute he becomes. The group is now going on another mission, but all the girls are upset because the mission is to investigate the slime researcher's castle, and all the girls hate slime, especially the green slimes that melt clothes. As soon as they enter the castle, they see a new type of slime they have never seen before, so they go through the document of the researcher in the hope of finding some information, but to their disappointment, all the books have been eaten by the slime. They finally manage to find one book with some information and decide to go further into the castle when they see a lot of green slimes. They try to escape onto the second floor, but to their surprise, the slimes don't follow them as soon as they reach the second floor, so they deduce that it must be that all the slimes have their own areas. El slips and falls onto the floor and gets covered in some sticky stuff when a new kind of slime comes in front of them. Linz, by reading the book they found, finds out that these slimes only secrete some fluid when they see a human and are harmless, but they all slip and fall onto the first floor except for Tuya, where the green slimes are present. As the slimes begin melting the girls' clothes, Tuya saves them by using the gate chant and transports them to the second floor, but most of their clothes are melted, so they are very embarrassed when Tuya looks toward them. After finding some new clothes, they head further into the castle and find another slime that attaches to a woman's breasts and mimics it, and is especially attracted to small breasts. The slime attacks Yumiya because of her small breasts, which make her angry, and she blows them away using wind magic. All these slimes are failed creations of the researcher, while he tried to create his perfect slime. As they go further inside, they find the slime that was meant to be the researcher's goal, and this slime's ability is that they can turn into other women. The slimes turn into the girls but are naked, which embarrasses the girls as they cover Tuya's eyes so he can't see. Afterward, they burn the whole castle down and Tuya realizes that the dream of all the men that the researcher had written in his notes was to enjoy a harem of naked women. The next day, Tuya takes Kohaku to the city as he had requested Tuya that he wants to observe a human town when they see Yi trying to help a little girl. Yi tells Tuya that the little girl is lost but she hasn't been able to help her because the little girl won't tell her anything. Tuya puts Kafuko in front of the little girl and when she sees a cute cat asking her for her name, she tells him that her name is Lim. Tuya uses search to see if he can locate Lim's parents, but he can't find them within the search chant ringing so he uses the chant on his smartphone and is able to locate her parents, and they successfully deliver her to her mother. Seeing this, Lei now asks Tuya to use the same chant to find her brother as she hasn't seen him since she left on this journey. Tuya tells her that it looks like her brother is in a dojo, which puts a smile on Lei's face, and she tells Tuya that he and his brother are very similar. In his room at the inn, Tuya uses magic and sees into Linz's room, and when he sees her changing clothes, he starts blushing. Linz comes into his room and asks him for help as she can't read the language on a script. She bought to learn new magic because she couldn't use her fire magic inside the castle on their previous mission. Tuya helps her by making her glasses capable of reading the ancient language, and after reading the script, she finds a chant called Bubble Bomb and decides to practice it immediately, but she isn't able to use it properly. After continuously practicing, all her mana drains and she collapses as Tuya brings her into her room, but after waking up, she goes straight back into practice. Seeing that she is running low on stamina, Tuya uses the chant transfer that he learned from the mage when he helped the king and transfers his mana to Linz. He then advises Linz on how to use Bubble Bomb, and she is able to do so after listening to him. 
Now Turia takes Elves to the royal capital to buy new gloves as her old gloves broke in one of their missions, but after doing so as they plan to return to the inn, Elves stops by a shop seeing a pretty suit. She says that she wants to buy it for Linz, but Turia forces her to try it and buys it for her as a gift. When they return to the inn, everyone praises her dress and says that they should now make Tuya buy one dress for everyone. Lumina gets a letter from the royal palace telling her and Tuya to come to the palace as they want to grant Tuya knighthood for solving the poisoning incident. Tuya gets gifted a mansion from the king when he goes to decline his knighthood, and when he goes to see the mansion with the rest of the group, they all are surprised to see how big it is. Tuya says that it's too big for five people to live in, which makes everyone blush as they expected that only Yumina and Tuya will live in this mansion. The king's former butler, Lame, and other servants come with the mansion to help Tuyo with everything he needs. Lame is also the older brother of Lim, the butler of the duke whom Tuya had saved before. Now the duke, along with Sushi, arrives at the mansion and tells Tuya that the king of Belfast is trying to make an alliance with kingdom Ms. Mead, but traveling is very dangerous for both of the kings, so he asks Tuya to travel to Ms. Mead and then use his gate to help the king travel. The ambassador of the kingdom, Miss Mead, Olga, also travels with Tuya as they are escorted by troops from both of the kingdoms. At night, when everyone sits by a campfire, they notice that they are being surrounded by bandits, but Tuya marks all of their locations on his smartphone and uses paralysis magic to defeat them instantly. Leon, the leader of the troops from Belfast, dispatches a mounted runner to fetch guards to get rid of the captured bandits, and as Olga thanks him for his work, he starts blushing, which makes Tuya and the girls realize his feelings for Olga. The next day, as Leon tries to buy something for Olga, Tuya, and the others help him by hinting at the things that Olga likes. Now, after traveling through the sea, Linz gets seasick, and Tuya carries her on his back, but as he puts her down, he senses something. When he looks around, he sees nothing and thinks that he must be imagining things, but Kohaku tells him that he isn't wrong and that there definitely is someone watching them, but their presence is now fully concealed. They start traveling toward the Eld village, but set up camp in a forest because of the dark, but when a dragon passes over them, they are shocked. Olda tells them that dragons don't leave the sacred grounds of their nation until some intruders come, but sometimes the younger dragons leave. When they arrive at the village, they see that the dragon has set the whole village on fire and has injured many people. So Tuya distracts the dragon and lures him away from the village. He knocks the dragon to the ground and Linz cuts off its wings, but the dragon is still very strong. Lei and Els also arrive and all of them work together to defeat the dragon when another dragon arrives, but this dragon speaks the human language and introduces himself as the red dragon who is in charge of the sacred grounds and apologizes on behalf of the younger dragon. When the dragon sees Kohaku, the white monarch, he is shocked and is even more shocked when he realizes that Tuya, a human, has become the white monarch's master. The red dragon again apologizes on behalf of the dragon and before he leaves, Tuya tells him to give a talk to the other young dragons so such an incident doesn't happen again. The group now helps the village and as Tuya falls asleep afterward, he wakes up lying down on Yumina's lap. All the other girls stand beside him, jealous of Yumina, but Tuya has no idea what is going on. As they are about to leave the village, the village's elder gives Tuya one of the fangs of the dragon because he broke his weapon while fighting. He also gives Tuya a knife that was in the eye of the dragon. When Tuya remembers that someone else threw that knife and Kohaku confirms his suspicions. As they arrive in the capital of Miss Merit, they go and meet the king who thanks them for coming and defeating the dragon. Seeing Tuya, he asks him for a duel because he gets fired up every time he sees someone strong. Before they start the duel, the rules are that no direct offensive magic can be used, so Tuya uses Slit Chant to make the king fall and immediately defeat him, but he asks for a rematch and tells Tuya not to use Slit Chant again. The king now uses his null magic called Axel, which increases his agility, but Tuya manages to dodge his attack and now uses Axel himself, which surprises the king. He combines the Excel magic with boost magic and defeats the king, who praises him for his strength. At night, Tuya finds a teddy bear moving around the castle, and when he follows it, the teddy bear leads him to a girl who tells Tuya that she is an elder of the fairy folk named Lean. She reveals that even though she looks his age, she is over 600 years old, and tells him that the teddy bear he followed is called Paula, who is able to move because of her null magic called Program. She explains to him that she can input commands into inanimate objects and make them move, which impresses Tuya as he uses Program himself, surprising Lean, who tells him that if he wants to, he can be her apprentice, but he refuses. The next morning, Tuya, accompanied by Linz and Yumina, makes a weapon out of the fang of the dragon using the chant modeling. He makes a gun and uses the Program chant to make it reload itself and also turn into a sword. Yumina and Linz, impressed by the weapon, ask Tuvia to make a gun for them as well, and he does so. Afterward, as they are moving through the city, Kohoku tells Tuya that someone is watching them, so Tuya tells the girls to go ahead as he uses the Axel chant and sneaks up on the observer. They try to run, but Tuya captures them easily when he finds out that they are the maids Lapis and Cecil, who were in his mansion in Belfast. 
They tell Tuvia that they were tasked by King Belfast to look after Yumina and request him not to tell Yumina about them. The next day, Tuvia uses the gate chant and brings King Belfast to Ms. Mead while Lean thinks about how her apprentice Charlotte the Mage is also in Belfast and decides that she should visit Belfast soon. Tuvia wakes up after taking a nap after returning from Ms. Mead to his mansion, and as he goes to take a bath, he runs into all the girls that are half-naked and embarrassed by the situation that all scold Tuvia. The Duke comes to visit when he finds Tuya working to make bicycles and then tries to ride one himself but keeps falling off. Yumina rides the bicycle easily and gets praised by Tuya, but all the other girls seeing this get jealous and try to top one another. The Duke now requests Tuya to make a small bicycle for Sushi, and when Toya goes to the market to buy material for the bicycle, he sees a child being threatened by two guys, so he decides to help. Afterward, he realizes that the child is a girl named Ren and asks her about her parents when she tells him that her mother is dead and her father hasn't returned after going to fight a magical beast, so Tuya offers her a job at his mansion, which Ren gladfully accepts. Tuya, Sushi, and Lu may now go to Ms. Mead because of Sushi's request when they see Arma, Olga's younger sister. As they move through the town, they see Leon with Olga and realize that Leon is having difficulty making a sincere move on Olga. Kane of Ms. Mead also runs into the group, and as they secretly watch Leon and Olga, Leon tries to help a person who is being ganged upon by other people. Tuya and the king wear masks and help him defeat the men, but their identities are not well concealed and are revealed immediately. The king runs away, but Leon catches Tuya and asks him what's going on when Tuya says that it's his fault for not being able to share his feelings. Leon then says that he wants to date Olga, and Olga accepts his offer for a date and thanks him for choosing her, when all the other girls also show themselves. At Tuya's mansion, Lean arrives with Paula and Charlotte when she tells Tuya about a crack in the sky that appeared in a village in Miss Mead, and a monster came out of it, which was similar to the crystal monster they had defeated in the old royal city. She tells Tuya that he can use a chant called Recall and see the thoughts of a person and whatever place he sees in the memories, he can travel to. So she tells him to read Ye's thoughts and open a gate to Ishin because she wants to see the ancient ruins present there. Ye first hesitates, but Lean tells her that he can't see her memories she doesn't want him to see. So Ye agrees to it, and Tuya uses recall and opens a gate as they arrive at Ishin. Tuya asks Lean about the location of the ancient ruins, but she only knows that they are called the Niria ruins and not their location when Ye says that her father might know where they are, so they go to meet her father. Ye meets with her mother, who is delighted to see her back, but when she asks about her father, she tells Ye that her father and brother have gone to the Kalago fortress with their lord Ayasu to fight against the Takedas, but as the situation is right now, the fortress is set to fall any moment. Ye asks Tuya to use recall once more to see the location of the fortress, but when they reach there, Lei is about to run into battle, but is stopped by Lean, telling her that she would only get injured in the method. Tuya suggests everyone to stay put while he uses long sense to check the surrounding area, and after that, he will open a gate so everyone can get safely to the fortress. Tuya opens a gate inside the fortress, where he is met with Ye's brother Jutaro who first questions Tuya, but after learning that he is Ye's friend, he asks to see her, who then comes out of the gate. Ye meets with her brother and asks about their father when Jutaro tells her not to worry, as their father is perfectly safe. Tuya asks about the enemies wearing oni masks that are outside when Jutaro tells him that the enemies should be dead, but no matter what, they keep getting up. Lean says that the oni masks must be artifacts which are relics of an ancient organization and powerful magic items. Tuya marks all the enemies around them on his smartphone using the chant multiple and then defeats all of them using a light magic attack called Shining Javelin. They now meet with Lord Iasu, who thanks Tuya for his help, and Tuya asks him if the Tekias will stand down now, but Ayasu tells him that they will attack again once they reform their ranks. Seeing the attacks, Ayasu says that the rumors that Shinjin has passed away must be true, and now the dark strategist Yamamoto Kansuke is leading the army of the dead, and the war may come to an end if Kansuke is captured, but they have no idea where he is. Suddenly, a girl named Tsubaki, a servant of Kozaka Masanobu, who was one of the four generals of Takeda, arrives with a letter for Iyasu which was asking for help as all the other generals were put in prison while Kozaka is making Kansuke believe that he is his ally. Tuya decides to go with Lean and help the generals, but it's daytime, so they decide to help the people in the fortress, for the time being and sneak in at night. Tuya uses recall with Tsubaki and arrives with Lean at the base of Kansuke, but they use Lean's magic to make themselves invisible so they can sneak in. Tuya tries to use Gate to get into the base, but Kansuke has put a barrier due to which he couldn't use it. Meanwhile, Lean, while being invisible, starts fondling Tsubaki's breasts and making her believe that it's Tuya who is doing so. Tuya and the others free all the generals from their cells and Tuya asks them about Kansuke's location, but he can't find it on his smartphone and asks Lean about how to get rid of the barrier. Len tells him that there must be a talisman that is causing the barrier and that destroying it will make the barrier collapse. 
After destroying the talisman, Tuya uses his magic first to defeat all the Oni soldiers, and then goes to Kansuke. The generals try to attack Kansuke, but he has taken control of their lord Shinjin, and the generals can't possibly imagine attacking their lord, but Tuya doesn't hesitate and defeats Shinjin. Kansuke now reveals a gem in his eyes that allows him to control the dead, but Tuya uses the Aport's chant and easily takes it away. After they destroy the gem, Kansuke dies as his body crumbles away, and the same thing happens to Shinjin as he is already dead and was just being used by Kansuke. After the battle, one of the generals named Baba tells them that the ruins they are looking for are at sea level and that he has been on an island near the ruins and Tuya uses recall with him to see the location. Ye says goodbye to her family as Tuya opens a gate to the island from Baba's memories. The group arrives at a beach, and after searching for the ruins on his smartphone, Tuya realizes that the ruins are submerged in the ocean, but for the moment, they forget about the ruins and start enjoying the ocean. The girls wish that they had swimsuits right now, so Tuya uses the gate to go to Belfast, and not only do they bring swimsuits back with them, they also bring everyone they know so they can enjoy the ocean with them. Tuya makes a tent so everyone can change into their swimsuits comfortably, and seeing everyone in their swimsuits, Tuya starts blushing. As everyone goes into the water, Tuya decides to investigate the ruins, but as he dives deep into the ocean, he can only see the entrance before he runs out of breath. Tuya asks Lean if she knows any spells that could help him underwater, but she knows no such magic and asks Charlotte if she knows, but she also can't remember anything. So Lean punishes her by telling her to wear her swimsuit all day. Kahaku tells Tuya that just like he is the White Emperor, there is also a Black Emperor that can help him underwater. But as they try to summon it, Lin says that usually it isn't possible to summon a specific individual. But Kohaku tells her that by combining his spirit energy with Tuya's magic, the Black Emperor is surely going to answer this call. Tuya summons the Black Emperor, who is two creatures embedded in one, a snake and a turtle. In order for a pact to be formed, the Black Emperor challenges Tuya to a fight. And if Tuya can survive until sunset, they will consider him their master. As the fight begins, Tuya uses the slip spell to make them fall and afterward fires a bullet at them, programming it to keep casting the slip spell until he cancels the command. The Black Emperor surrenders after falling for a long amount of time and they accept Tuya as their master so to complete the pact, Tuya gives them the name Sanga and Kokuyu. The snake takes the name Kokuyu and the turtle takes the name Sanga, but before anything else, Kohaku tells them to transform so they turn themselves into a smaller version and are even able to float. Now Tuya decides to enjoy the ocean before going into the ruins and Lean tells him that it would be wise to do so as all the other girls are getting envious that he is spending all of his time with her. The girls now ask Tuya if he is spending more time with Lean because he likes her swimsuit, but he tells them that's not the case, so they ask him whose swimsuit he likes the most. Not to hurt anyone's feelings, he says he likes Sushi's the most, but the girls get the wrong idea that he likes her more than all of them. They see a picture of Sushi and Ren on his smartphone which makes their suspicions grow even larger, but he assures them that it's not the case, and he just wants to keep a memory. Tuya goes into the ocean with the Black Emperor, but now he can easily breathe underwater and can even walk normally. As he enters the ruins, he sees a stone in the middle, and as he passes his magic through it, he is transported somewhere else. A girl named Francesca welcomes him, saying that she is the terminal that controls the aerial garden of Babylon, but all Tuya can focus on is that she is only wearing panties from the waist down. Tuya tries to imagine that she is just wearing a swimsuit but can't do so when Francesca tells him that she can cover herself up if he wants her to do so and Tuya immediately tells her to do it. She now tells him that this is the Garden of Babylon created by Professor Regina Babylon. She reveals that she is not a human and is 5092 years old as she was created by the professor, but she does have some biological parts created through magic. She now transfers her control to Tuya because she likes his character, and that was the reason she was showing her panties because if Tuya had given in to his lust, she would have thrown him out of the garden, and if he had done nothing, she still would have asked him to leave, but Tuya told her to cover herself up. Tuya now brings the other girls to Babylon, and Lean says that this looks like the ruins of the Parthenos civilization, which was an advanced civilization that created many magic spells and artifacts. Lean jokes about Francesca that she is Tuya's new woman, but Tuya tells her to stop saying such things and reveals that she is in charge of the garden, and Francesca says to everyone that Tuya is her master and her beloved husband, and that she showed him her panties and offered her body and soul to him. Hearing this, Linz gets mad and asks Tuya if looking at all of them in swimsuits is not enough for him, or is it that panties and swimsuits are not the same? Lean tells her to let Tuya off the hook as he doesn't even understand what she is angry about and tells all the girls that if they want to scold him for such things, they should tell him where they stand with him. Yumina asks the girls to leave Lean and Tuya here with Francesca while they go on a stroll around the park. When they get alone, Yumina asks everyone if they remember what she proposed on the first day they moved to the mansion, and in a flashback, we see Yumina proposing that they should all become Tuya's bride as they all love him. 
She had given them time to fully understand their feelings, so she again asked them if they agreed to the proposal, but the girls still couldn't give a definite answer. They now return where Francesca is telling Tuya and Lean about how there are nine other areas floating in the sky that are managed by her other sisters, but they cannot be seen from the surface. Lean asks her if she can contact the others, but she says that her connection with the others has been severed, so she can't. She now requests Tuya to allow her to live with him, but when he asks her that wouldn't it be a problem if no one was here, she tells him that if anything happens, she will know instantly and has the ability to transport her immediately. She now asks Tuya to complete the registration for the transfer of control of the garden, and when Tuya asks her what he has to do, she kisses him to collect his genetic information. Linz now stands up, and Tuya thinks that she is about to scold him again, but she tells Tuya that she loves him and proceeds to kiss him. The group now returns home, and Francesca is introduced to everyone as she will join them while Tuya goes to his room but keeps thinking about Linz's confession. Lumin comes to Tuya's room, but she is angry and tells Tuya that two people have kissed him before her, so to make it up to her, he has to kiss her now. Tuya kisses her, and Lumi now asks him what he thinks about Linz, does he like her or not because he didn't respond to Linz when she kissed her? Tuya tells her that she likes and cherishes Linz when Linz suddenly appears beside him as she was already present there but was invisible due to Linz's magic. Linz feels relieved hearing Tuya's feelings for her because she thought he hated her. She asks Tuya to also take her as a wife. Tuya, first confused by the situation, accepts her proposal after asking Lumin if she's on board with it. The next morning, Ye and Els challenge Tuya to a fight, telling him that if he wins, they will stay quiet, but if they win, he will have to listen to her. They manage to defeat Tuya and afterward confess their feelings of love for him and ask him to also marry them. Tuya asks them for some time before he answers their question and afterward, as he is sitting alone, Francesca tells him that her master has left a message for him. She gives him a cable which Tuya puts in his phone and Regina Babylon's hologram appears in front of her. She tells him that she is able to see into the future, that's why she knows his name and is able to have a conversation with him. She tells him that Phrase, the kind monster they defeated in the old royal city, had caused the download of Petrino civilization, and she couldn't see a future that meant the world was going to be destroyed, but Tuya's appearance has again made her able to see the future. Tuya asks her if she can see the future, can she tell him what is going to happen between him and the girls because he can't make a decision, but Regina refuses to tell him as it takes out all the fun from the situation. Tuya visits God in the hope of finding an answer to his situation, and God calls the God of love to help him resolve the situation. The God of love tells him that he should listen to his heart, and if all of them, including him, are happy, then there is nothing to question about. Tuya returns to all the girls and tells them that he will marry them, but not right now because he isn't mature enough to carry such responsibilities, so after a while, if they still want to marry him, he will do so, and the girls agree with this decision. Els and Yi find out that Tuya has kissed the other two, so they demand that he kisses them too, when as he goes to kiss Els, she gets embarrassed and punches him. Meanwhile, Francesca, Lean, and Charlotte are watching them from the windows when Francesca reveals that Professor Regina has told her that Tuya will have nine wives in the future, and she asks Lean whether she will also be one of them or not. 